thee. Eight minutes counting, you know. How, we have 58 how, minutes. how long we get before we get started? No, we've started. We're on. This is it, man. Oh, it's it's going out to the universe now. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, welcome. Uh, it's so good to see you. It was good to do that program Absolutely. the other day with Michael and everything. Michael but Rosen. in the audience, welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations. Pleasure to welcome to the program a dear friend of mine, and I would say the universe, and certainly the Lower East Side of Manhattan in New York City, that being Clayton Patterson. He's the dean of the documentarians and artists of that part of the world, including Tompkins Square. He documents that area with his photography and with video and with writing uh, better, I think, than anyone else. And we all owe you a great debt for all the great work you're doing down there. So it's so good to welcome you once again to Conversation. Well, thank you. I mean, some people might say docu-contrarian. But, uh, okay, yeah, right. On, and on another level, it's, uh, it's not a competition. It's an individual thing. I'm not okay. in competition with anybody. So mm -hmm. I don't see myself as above or below or different or uh, different maybe. But uh, so the whole stratosphere of checking it in that way, I don't, it's not part of who I am. Well, that's the way I see you. And okay. a lot of people do. And but I'm happy to have documented that neighborhood for you a long sure time. Have. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, I think it's important. I, it's part of my artwork and how I think and how I conceptualize things. Mm -hmm. I think it's part of my duty of giving back to uh, where I came from and the, and, the, and the privilege of being able to do what it is that I've done. Mm -hmm. I think I've lived as a free individual within the society and within New York, which is changing now. And this door and this book sort of shows that. Yeah. At one time, Lower East Side was really a magical kingdom, and you could be whoever it is you wanted to be. That's interesting. As an individual. That's and it, interesting yeah. and uh, that's why at one time uh, so many real you know geniuses really came out of that uh, out of that neighborhood. They did. so much talent. It is still a, a, a place. Well see I disagree. Well you and, do. You uh, think it's and, not. And, it's and I'll give you an right? example for example. Mm -hmm. You know I'm working on uh, getting this book out yeah, here called we're, Front Door Yeah we're talking about the door. Front Door Book. Anybody who's been down to his place on Essex Street uh, he, he's got photographs all over and this is the front door of his unit down there. And if you look at the uh, the front door for example I always had uh, kids graffiti it. Now the yeah. interesting thing about the graffiti at Lower East Side is that the neighborhood really was also blanketed by drugs, which yeah. meant that the, uh, the drug dealers controlled the streets in the neighborhood. And uh, that meant that, uh, you know, people didn't come in and bomb the neighborhood like they do now. Bomb meaning put up their own graffiti marks and like that. Mm. So I would uh, allow people to use my front door. And I had two things going on. One was the Wall of Fame, which was the photographs yeah. I took in front of my door. And the other one was the Hall of Fame, which mm -hmm. was the actual door of which I allowed people to graffiti. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, my rights are being, uh, you know, uh, violated because it's my door. I own that door, and it's a, it's it's just my door, and whatever is on it is is up to me. As long as it's not pornographic or offensive to the world or whatever, uh, then it's it's my choice. Now I have Bloomberg, this uh, billionaire who's trying to enforce his will on on my aesthetics and who I am. And like I say, I've photographed in front of that door since about 1985, and I'm now here to tell. I got a $300 fine. Yeah, because I have what he would call graffiti on that door. Really? And now that those marks really are, are a, a continuum. They've been a history of the neighborhood, and I've Indeed. documented that. Uh -huh. And so and I've photographed the people from the neighborhood in front of that door. And that's really what this, uh, what mm -hmm. this uh, program is about. It's about the... Um, mm -hmm. It's about the... Um, this new book that came out called yeah. The Front Door Book. Right. And now the interesting thing about uh, the book for me is that at that time uh, the, the uh, neighborhood was heavily Hispanic. Yeah. And now how do I integrate myself into a Hispanic society, uh, culture, uh, neighborhood really, um, not speaking Spanish and not being Spanish. And one of the ways of doing that was to um, photograph the people and make them famous. Let, could, could we digress just for a minute sure. and share your background? You're from Canada uh, originally, from originally. Calgary, you and Elsa. And maybe we want you to share that. We'll come back to this, okay? Okay. But you share your own background. You're from Canada, and you've come here how long now have you been in New York? Uh, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh -huh. I came here in 1979, uh -huh. and I've lived uh, really on the Lower East Side the whole time. Uh -huh. In the beginning, I lived in different parts you came of the Lower East Side. what year? Uh, 1979. 79. Okay, okay, and right. And so uh -huh. first showing up on... Uh, we lived in Brooklyn for three weeks, and then eventually we moved to uh, 325 Broom Street. How come you came to New York, do you think? Uh, I, just, I was just too out of place in Western Canada. They you didn't were. understand my aesthetics. They uh -huh. didn't understand my vision. Always they didn't an understand artist. Who you were I always am. an artist, right? I was always uh, an artist yeah. and, out, and, out, and an outsider. Uh-huh, right. Okay. And uh -huh. so by being an artist and an outsider and not really fitting into that society, which was very conservative yeah. and very sort of uniform. Yeah, right, 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 right. And that just wasn't me. And, uh, you know, in terms of a society that's uh, really where um, 
you know, people are, uh, you know, follow a norm and have a limited sort of uh, range of how far off that norm they'll go, mm -hmm. it was just really too restrictive for me. Okay, I and think a so, lot of people maybe come to New York because they think that's where there's going to be some action and some real artistic exploration and so forth. It's a creative area. Uh, yeah, coming uh, to Lower East Side, it was uh, basically finding myself. Yeah. It, it allowed me to be me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from that, uh, you know, I could uh, eventually create the Clayton cap. Which, yeah, you uh, did. That's, yeah. You know, changed the history of the baseball cap because mm -hmm. I was the first person to put a label, a signature, and embroidery going around. I did mm -hmm. individual caps. I made caps for all kinds of famous people. Mm -hmm. And the caps kept us alive for, mm -hmm. uh, for several years. Okay. So I could live as a free individual and live on my, my, my creativity and my mm -hmm. art, the, the kinds of things that I did. Even for New York, tended to be pretty obscure and sort of outside the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I got to a place where I built a, a lot of sculpture, really so much sculpture that what happened was is that I sort of built my house, myself out of house and home, and I kept well, on getting smaller. So were I you always at Essex Street, or were you living somewhere else for a while? I uh, started off at uh, three two five Broom Street, really. I'm Big like, place. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a loft like, right? Or, yeah, no. it was a railroad, railroad okay. uh, in a yeah. tenement. Yeah. Okay. You and were sculpting. It, uh, sculpting, painting. Elsa's the same. She's El a, yeah. a painter. Yeah, Elsa's your wife. Lovely. You love um, I We're not married, but we've lived together for 38 years. Okay, right. Okay. So, yeah. you know, that's another, well, you know, I mean, that's changing now, too, because yeah. now it's becoming, uh, uh, New York is becoming so conservative and so restricted. It is, isn't it? Yeah. The, you know, we had a party broken up the other night on a Friday night at 1 o'clock because they thought it was getting late. I began to think we're living in the middle of an Iowa or yeah, something, our you know, instead it used to be New York City was a place where you could kick out the jams a little bit, a little um, artistic yeah. creativity and everything. Well, now it's I getting conservative, to, uh, isn't it? Do you feel it that way? Of it, it's intruding upon of course, free spirits and so uh, forth. Well, people are attempting to be doing free my spirits. Front door. I got a three hundred dollar fine for having something on my door. The mayor is trying to, uh, you know, enforce his will on my door, and I don't think it's his business. I don't think it's his right. I think it's my free speech. Mm. And then he, you know, uh, Bloomberg punishes by uh, he, he rewards or punishes by by money. That's all he thinks about. Well, isn't together. that the major thing in terms of the organization of the whole society? It's all about money? No. Is it what, what other values are there? In terms of you want one value that motivates the, story, the way people, that motivates people individually and group collectively and so forth, what is there more important than money? It's more important no, than politics. No, let's, well, I mean, you know, that's just sort of a gross overstatement. And you think it is? Yeah, and life doesn't is? really, yes, life doesn't really work like that. And really the For most people it does. It, well, that's the most. Can I answer the question? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Mm. So really, in the past, what happened was is that the deciding factor was cheap rent. What, what you're talking about now with the money, like a person like Bloomberg, that's all he thinks about is money. He's a money man. He, may, he you know, he went from seven and a half billion dollars to fifteen billion dollars working as our mayor. Uh -huh. Our our uh, uh, worth of the city and our economy went down, and his went up. He doubled, and ours uh, toppled. But the point is, is that one of the ingredients of genius in the past in New York was cheap rent. Like I've used the example all the time, is that Lou Reed lived on, on uh, Ludlow Street for $38 a month living in a loft. And he went through the different stages, you know, of am I gay, am I straight, am I a junkie, am I not? And mm -hmm. it takes a few years for Lou Reed to become Lou Reed. Yeah, right. Then you also had like Jimi Hendrix and Jackson Pollock and Rothko and Emma Goldman and Dorothy Day and on and on and on. Houdini, the list is endless, including Rudolph Giuliani. Mm -hmm. And But once you got into uh, the Republican era, then the whole system of rent and that changed. I mean, that's really been going through changes for a, a number of years, and you know, the whole fight about uh, rent control and rent stabilization. Yeah. But once you then have to pay $1,500, like, for yeah. example, across from Katz's, a studio is $3,000 a month. So it's, that's the new building, the a new luxury building. A studio apartment? A studio apartment. The rent for a studio apartment, right. is that much? So that that's eliminates, absurd. That, that eliminates no. the possibility of a, a Rothko, a Jackson Pollock, a Rudolph Giuliani, any of those different kinds of people. I mean, it's not just the, the, the artists. It's also almost everybody that's made any kind of contribution because you cannot pay $3,000 a month and like work in a bar two nights a week or work as a waitress one day Or have day any a week. time left over to paint a tooting or make a poem right. once in a while. So they've killed is the it, muse. They've killed me, the muse. You think so? Okay. Absolutely. Is it the same across the country? Is it like St. Louis or Cincinnati or Ames, Iowa? Is it the same that the rents are so outlandishly high? 
Well, or I is mean, it I, just I think New York? A reflection in, in, in I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, let's let's. Or just, the cost of housing. Let's look at what is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. What is is people are losing their homes. At, at an now foreclosures. Everything's going on. So now. that's going on. We Horrible. know that, that we know that we've lost the creativity in the in the car business because General Motors and the big car companies are crashing. Mm -hmm. We know that industry here is dying. Mm -hmm. So we've lost our creativity, and that's what America was about: individual creativity, people coming in with new ideas. Yeah. And with that kind of rent it's killed that now you know now it's a worker society it doesn't matter if you're a doctor or a lawyer or a Wall Street person or whatever you're still a worker within the system yeah whereas before people like I say Jackson Pollock or Rothko or Jimi Hendrix or all of those people were individuals surviving by their own creativity and making contributions that change the world yeah but that's um, over Vincent van Gogh had a hard time never could sell a painting Vincent trying to van do Gogh it off came his from a privileged family and his brother took care of him the same with Suzanne okay. although you know America was different than all of those privileged people. I mean, yeah. I get tired of hearing about the Cezannes and the Duchamps and the Van Gogh and uh -huh. all of that nonsense. Uh -huh. All of those people were hooked up with the uh, with the establishment. Uh -huh. That's why they were saved. Uh -huh. In America, these people like Jimi Hendrix or Jackson Pollock or any of those people didn't come from the establishment. You know, corn, cornfields in uh, in Kansas uh -huh. or. You know, I mean, it's it's. They came from the ground up. They they didn't have the hookup. Well, nowadays, when you're paying three thousand dollars for a studio, you have to have the hookup. Whoa. And Van Gogh had a hookup, so he's not a good example. You know, that system oh. in Europe, to, in order to be a dealer or an art dealer at that time, especially the time of him, Theo. that was a privileged part of society. That was Theo. Yeah, that yeah. was he belonged yeah. to the he he belonged to the to the privileged class. So okay. he wasn't like some guy that just happened to have his brother's painting and took them out from under the bed and say, "Hey, I got these paintings, aren't they great?" Mm. That's a mythology. That's okay. nonsense. And 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 that syndrome that uh and they pay better attention to the arts than they do here in the United States. It seems to me they get short shrift. The arts as general, uh, compared well, to the other one time more it was practical, to be technological an accounting and things, you know? I mean, at one time it was possible to be an outsider. As at one time it was possible to be original, unique, and different. But it's not like that anymore. The Britney Spears come up from childhood, and, they're, and, they're, and they're, it's corporate now. Mm -hmm. and this whole corporate model is destroying the individual. Mm -hmm. America was about the individual. Mm -hmm. We've lost our individuality. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that brings me back to the book. And if, right, if you okay, look good. at this book, no. uh, the book is really about the uh, cross section of Lower East Side. And it's right. people, and basically it's people that were on the street. Now, if you're in an inner city, it's who's on the street kind of controls the street. Actually, two major changes happened that really, that you were asking about the change. Yeah. It wasn't really about the economics that changed here because economics couldn't survive here because the streets ran the city. And I, it was really Dinkins who figured that out. Now, what Dinkins realized was the police were corrupt. And actually, I did a tape in 1988. It became known as the Tompkins Square Park Police Riot. Absolutely, yeah. That police riot showed that the police were completely out of control and they had lacked authority. There was no you know, system authority within the police department. And Dinkins came along and he understood two things. He understood that police brutality and all that exists and it's a reality. And one reason for that existence and the reality is because they have no, uh, not only chain of command, but they don't have control of their uh, their own organization. So he did things Their like organization being New York the police City? Department. The New police, York City. The poli I'm talking about the, the police department. The people responsible for New York City. I'm talking about the police department. Police department. So then he brought They were in rogue in terms of the overall, they yes. are answerable to the mayor and so forth. I mean, there's a, there's a political system existing and the police are well, supposed to be Well, let's, at let's the, go back uh, to the reality yeah. of the situation. Okay, Koch yeah. was not in control, and mm. so um, he, was, he was out of control. So what, he, what Dinkins did was he brought in the Mullen Commission. The Mullen Commission came along and started rooting out all of the little drug-dealing uh, gangs in, in the, within the there NYPD. There was that war on drugs. Is that still going? No, that's, we're, uh, we're, jump, we're topic jumping. Okay, so in order yeah. to sort of stick with that okay, thought, yeah. he, he brought in the Mullen Commission. The Mullen Commission started clearing out a lot of the rogue cops and like that, and they also then changed the structure so it topped down, which meant that the command started at one police plaza and went all the way down. Trying to get control, like military. Paramilitary. Yeah, Sir and, and they Serpico did. did made it. And they did. Well, Serpico was the NAP commission and much earlier, but that didn't yeah. change the systemic problem. All right, of the it was city. systemic, right? Dinkins Not individual. Did. Yeah, Dinkins okay. at that time changed it. Okay. Uh, with the Mullen Commission, he understood that if you control the streets, you control the city. And then once he got control of the police department, and which by the time was totally organized, and that's when Giuliani came in, and so mm -hmm. he then had this organization that was functional. Mm -hmm. Then you clear the streets, and then the money comes in. Mm -hmm. And once you control the streets, and NYU took over our neighborhood, they're starting to build these these mega dorms. You know, the Wall Columbia Street is people doing come the in. same uptown, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, and so uh -huh. that that flushed the streets of the danger. So mm -hmm. in the past, in a, in a way, the drugs in that culture was was a was a was a border, a barrier for people with money to come in. Yeah, it was too. Who threatening. was it that turned Times Squares into? Uh 
Disney World. Well, that all from started, what it that used to started, be. It used to have a lot the, more class. Or it or, started or, with. That's the whole point about Dinkins. Yeah. He cleaned the streets. Once mm. you once once you allowed control the streets, and then Giuliani swept the streets. Mm. Dinkins control. Giuliani swept, mm. but he couldn't sweep until that that structural change had happened. Mm -hmm. So once that structural change had happened, then all of a sudden the inner city people just got flushed out because it isn't just the drug dealers; it's it's the whole it's the whole culture, mm. and that's one of the things like with this book. Yeah, right. Okay. So the book. So getting back to the book. Yeah. What, what right. The, what, what the photographs of the front door represent really was was the people who were on the streets of the Lower East Side. Okay. And you can see in from the book, most people that came around. They were, at that time, down where I was, was mostly Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And the thing mm -hmm. about pictures is when you go through the pictures, you realize that all of these people are no longer there because you have the memory. New York yeah. is, is an active, changing place. It's like being in a beehive. You yeah, don't lower. Really realize how, how structurally the whole thing is changing because every day it's different and new. Right, right, but right. But if you can stop and look back, and pictures do that, all of a sudden mm. the memories, you say, well, where's this guy? Where's this person? Where's this person? All Who of a sudden was the you realize, famous photographer of the Lower East Side when it was oh, largely many. Jewish? Jacob no, the Reese, one with the Arabs. Uh, yeah. Reese, Jacob Reese, Jacob yeah. Reese, certainly yeah. Ouija. I mean, yeah. there's been a lot of photographers yeah. in the Lower East Side. Gangs of New York is a film that was, he came out. Yeah, history, yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, mm. That changed that. And so the interesting thing about this book is you can look here and you can see how many people are no longer there. Uh -huh. And you can see how the look of the street has changed and how the culture has changed and how the ethnicity has changed. All of a sudden it's no longer Hispanic. Now it's mostly white, middle class. and um, Gentrified? Is that course. the term? It's Absolutely. all gentrified it's now. Definitely you got to be a professional making a whole lot in order to afford the rent. It's yes. largely the rent that's out of whack. That's right. Is rent as much, uh, is food more out of whack with what it used to be 20 or 30 years ago in terms of well, the other way it percentage the of income that goes to meet that particular need? Or is it Absolutely. just the rent? No, it's, it's also the food. Like, for example, you will remember, you know, the 99 cent breakfast, uh, two eggs, toast, coffee, pan fries, unlimited, co you know, unlimited coffee and a mm -hmm. small juice. You had a, a choice of, of, of toast. You could have, you know, a rye, white, or uh, or whole wheat, let's mm -hmm. say. Or lots of butter if you want. Well, you could have lots of butter if you want. <laughs> yes. But you yeah. see, the rent was cheap on the restaurants, so mm -hmm. the food was cheap, and then they had people where the wages didn't have to be as high. Mm -hmm. And it was really much more of a working class or sympathetic to the people. Well, the, the people at large, yeah. Yeah, to everybody. Because the, the upper middle class, or the, the professional class is just below the upper class, I guess, and all of that. So, but that still is a relatively small percentage of the overall population of the country. Most of the people are uh, not in the upper middle class reaches or in the, much less in the upper class reaches, like uh, the you know, way they used to have the, 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 the royal families in Europe or the dynastic states had earls and layers and class. And you know, everything. I'd have to say I have no idea. I don't either. I was just guessing, but I've yeah, assumed so I assume so I wouldn't even be interested in guessing. And it's okay. like, for, for me, for example, to, to talk about Bush or Cheney or whatever, I can have an opinion on that, but I don't really know about that. Yeah. The thing that I can be familiar with is my own neighborhood. Right, you I can are. touch okay, it good. and feel it and see it and smell it and be part of it and make mm. a contribution to it interact with it so I can see my neighborhood changing is yeah. my is my neighborhood is the neighborhood in in Lawrence Kansas changing in the same way I have no idea they did a book about that so but guy didn't call my assumption name. is, is yeah. that what happens in New York happens everywhere because you know time is relative and the same for everybody so the changes tend to be the same what about the, the what about the neighborhoods of New York you got Brooklyn you got Upper West Side Upper East Side and that Harlem you got different neighborhoods so as your, as your neighborhood changes is it indicative of the whole city or how do you relate to the whole city and and then try to relate it into the larger state and national context if you can. I can't. Okay, you can't. Okay, fair but enough. But I can stick fair to my neighborhood. Enough. Right, and, okay, and stick so to, to you know, okay. Otherwise, I'm speculating, I'm, mm. and I don't really want to get yeah. into myth or okay. speculation or you know, dealing without reality. I'd like to kind of be You told me in another program you did a couple of weeks ago with Michael that, uh, that the people in the prison is a huge percentage of people in our prison industrial complex that are from the Lower East Side. That's I was true. shocked. I didn't think yeah. that. that you, but that's a fact. Maybe you laid that out. No, no, that's absolutely. In, that's, I mean, a, that's a demographic. I can go through this book. Actually, one of the people on the uh, cover here, Marco, this, uh, mm. he's now in jail. Really? He okay. just got a deal for eight years, and he was out of jail at that time. He got out. Uh, he'd done his time. He came out. Um, you know, I don't want to say changed his life. 
You see, the other thing you have to remember is, now I have like a dope bag collection, and the thing that's really interesting about the dope bag collection is, is that once you start looking at these dope bags. What's a dope bag? Uh, it's a heroin, it was a bag that heroin was sold in. Oh, okay. And then when you look at that bag and you realize that there's a name on it, then, uh -huh. then you realize that that's a brand. Mm -hmm. And for example, you could have They have brands of heroin? They did have brands of heroin. Really? And brands indicate its place. And so if you had like Hellraiser, or, or yeah, Hellraiser would be uh, Stanton and uh, Ludlow, but let's say, let's take That's the That's a location down in the Lower There you side. go. That's a brand and a location. When somebody would say Red Rum, the person that could come here from Smashing Pumpkins from Seattle knew to go to 3rd and C and he could buy Red Rum. That's the... Wait a minute, the, I'm not able to follow you. What's Smashing yeah. Pumpkins? Uh, there was a band that was around, a oh, grunge band. Oh, okay, yeah. And so the, the, uh, one of the people in the band came mm. to New York and died of a heroin overdose mm. from a heroin that was purchased on the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. But yet he knew to go to 3rd and C. So the whole thing was really understood, was, was really obvious to in, within the culture. Mm -hmm. And if you were a junkie or somebody familiar with the drug trade, you knew that if you wanted to get Hellraiser, you'd go to uh, uh, Stanton Stan Ludlow. Ludlow. There you go. Now you know <laughs> I'll that. be dying. Well, now I was, uh, okay, fine. I've, well, I've been there, but I hadn't uh, noticed. Right. I exactly. wouldn't look but at other you, people, yeah. But other people would. Yeah, right, okay. And yeah. so. And the you, word gets around. And right? the word gets around. Yeah, and it's like a Damon Runyon thing. I guess so. so like Damon Runyon, he used to be up in Times Square, but it's it's very street, uh, idio, uh, idiocentric to that area. Right to that area, specifically that yeah. area. And, and it's good to talk <coughs> in the vernacular. It's good to talk in the vernacular. In exactly. report, you write in the vernacular too, or you're able to right. deal with that vernacular language of the reality of the street life. And yeah. the over, but, but the point that I was getting to is that that culture on Lower East Side was really a, a business. There was business, but there was also, I've always thought Lower East Side, a lot of creativity. There has been. I associated with creativity and artists. No question. And, yeah. But let's stick to the topic that okay, we're sort okay, of funneling okay. into, because okay, you good. asked me about the prisons, and right. that relates to the drugs. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is, is that it was really part of the, the business or the economic uh, existence, the world of the Lower East Side. So if you were, let's say, brought up in 7th Street between B and C, where, let's say, J.R. sold bag in a bag, and that's did near for, Tompkins Square. That's near Tompkins Square, and yeah. did for let's say over twenty-five years. For Who? Just a person. A person. Oh. So all of a sudden, that everybody knew. Yeah, that everybody knew. If, like, you Including know, including all the authorities knew and everything. Well, I mean, I can't speak to them because things didn't change for a long time. Okay. But what I would say is mm. if you wanted to know about the drugs in the neighborhood, really, you could ask the kid in grade one that lives in the block and he could, <laughs> he could lay out what the whole system was because he lived with it. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. <coughs> so. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of like the business never changed, but sometimes the people who sold did. Uh -huh. And you see, if you looked at Harlem, for example, the drug trade in Lower East Side was much larger because the drug trade in Harlem basically sold to Harlem. White people weren't really that familiar walking around the streets, especially at 2 o'clock in the morning in most of black Harlem at that time. Whereas the Lower East Side was more integrated, so you would have white people, black people, all kinds of people in the Lower East Side mm. because it was, you know, it was, it was diverse, ethnically diverse. Mm. So, and it was also close to Wall Street and wherever. So you had this, this huge. You got economy. a lot of them Wall Street guys trying to get some crack or no, some oh, co heroin, cocaine, cocaine or whatever. Yeah. And they, they do a lot. The people that are in those upper reaches of the financial but community. But see, that's the point that I'm They I do a lot to. of that stuff. It's not just, you know. Well, that's why I want to stay on topic. Yeah. And okay. so the topic Good. really. Is, is is to uh, back to the prisons mm -hmm. and so with these kids growing up in the neighborhood and that was a familiar uh, business on the street it almost was a natural thing to fall into mm -hmm. and so so many people got swept up into that business and then ended up uh, becoming part of the prison business but yeah like you it's say, a big grow, uh, growth industry it's a huge growth the, industry the prison industrial complex but the we have more people percentage than any other country in the world i think i wouldn't be surprised yeah. the lower east side is a large and it costs more to send somebody to prison than it does to send them to Harvard, I think. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not surprised. I think, yeah. But Odd. So the point is, is when, yeah. you, when you weigh it out, yeah. obviously the, the people on the Lower East Side aren't the largest part of the drug world. Mm. So why are they the largest part of the prison world? And so when you start looking at mm. uh, how many, like, like you say, Wall Street people, lawyers, doctors, everybody, they're all using drugs. So many people have used cocaine and heroin and whatever. But proportionally wise, they're not the ones that are going to jail. Well, if they get caught, they can have a high priced lawyer that can get them off because there's or a lot they of. Or go to rehab. Or they can or do something. Yeah, because they had a high priced shows. lawyer there's, there's, who fronts for them. 
and or protects them. Even if they, yeah, it's yeah. exactly. It's, that's it's, the way the society works in a class way. Yeah. Right, and it yeah. definitely is a class it's way. It's just class. Yeah. I mean, they have TV show now about people that are going to uh, to rehab. So here you have uh, you know people basically that can afford it, and they, there's a special doctor, and he talks to everybody. And mm. but you know Heidi Fleisch and you know people like that. Mm. So they get to go to rehab, mm. whereas the kids from Lower East Side get to go they to jail. They get to go to prison, yeah. And the jail, once you're part of that, it's it's not only yeah, economic, it. but, yeah. it's, but it's also uh, psychologically, and it Absolutely. also puts you into that place. All yeah. of a sudden, now you're part of the prison culture. Right. So yeah. you get out, you have a felony, you're now a felon, you know, there's so many things you can't do. So you're now forced to be part of that world. Was, it, was, it, was a lot of that having to do with the war on drugs and this paranoid thing that they had? They had those Rockefeller laws and that kind of stuff. Oh, those there, there were, it was like It was like... Kerry, it was a Kerry Nation who did the prohibition against alcohol or something. They were going to try and do something, and it just didn't work. Well, it worked for you certain know. people, but no, it, didn't it, worked, work for all, it, it didn't work for the common person. Well, yeah, or for the society at large. Like, prohibition yeah. of alcohol did not work. People made white no, lightning drug, and it went, and they the had to repeal it. The drug world doesn't work either, and, and punishing people doesn't work either, because yeah, but, there's so many people that do. You see, I say that... It, but like, now, it, even with marijuana, they're getting... Isn't it legal yet? Isn't marijuana legal? Somebody I heard it was smoke? in New Jersey. I don't know. Yeah, or some, but it's becoming legal. It's becoming minimized. And, they're, they're, and they're, they're growing marijuana medically out in California, and they're getting all kinds of fancy buds and everything. Uh, Amsterdam Look, has it legal. You Everything's can buy legal. drugs mm. in any corner of America. It's that common and that out of control. By drugs, you mean m- marijuana? Oh, I'm, marijuana, heroin, uh, methamphetamine. I mean, you can go all to over the, America. You can get yeah, huh? pretty well. I mean, well, I'm, then I'm somebody's making a lot of money. They, the Valentine Day and the you know bugs, bugs. You know, well, we're living in a lie. Co- That's the problem. How, well, yes. How, how can we deal with society in an effective way if what we're doing is we're talking? Why lies? was the established authority so against drugs? What is the reason for well, that? I mean, uh, Beginning with alcohol, you know, I mean, alcohol's you know, probably part, the worst. Part, part of it's a certain group of people can make a lot of money and other people can't. There's people of control. I mean, yeah, let's, it's complex, let, yeah. let's not get off into that okay, tangent okay, because okay. I'm here to try to talk about a book. And then, yeah, and and listen, then I'm, I'd be into the position of speculating. And, and one of the problems is because you're so damn, you shouldn't be so interesting, Clayton. You've always been interesting. Oh, I've well, talked to you for hours. And Elsa is, uh, but the thing is that we've only got an hour. And so you've got too much to say. Book. And you're so focused and you're so yeah. interesting. But we have a clip, too. I want to keep it in mind. Yes. We have a clip, a DVD with some pictures Absolutely. and things, and we're going to show your site. That'd be great. And stuff. I wonder, maybe we could do that now if they're in the control. That would be What wonderful. did you want to do? Bring the picture of the site first and then bring, you've got some photos in the form of a DVD. I DVD uh, that'll fill that would be, uh, Why don't we get that in now? Book. Okay. I agree. Let's. Okay. Do now, what are we going to do? You want to show the site, or maybe we can show the photos first, or what? I'll leave it up to Richard because okay, I think Richard. he organized it. Yeah. If you can bring up the site easy, if not, maybe you want to bring up the DVD if you've got that queued, and then bring it up. And uh, we, I guess uh, you got a DVD with some photos that goes about four minutes, a picture yeah. uh, thing. So one of those two things, if you could bring those up, you do. Just whenever you get to it, bring those up. Either the, the, uh, the uh, what was the one? The one with Boris Lurie? What's the name of the site? Uh, no Art. No Art. There we go. Here is the book. And this yeah, might the, be uh, some the front pictures. Book, and then you can see like the graffiti on the door. And then you can see to the right of that, you can see where the uh, pictures were. So people would come and look at the pictures. Hmm. And hmm. so, um, well, I guess we're not doing that. Okay, that's uh, the uh, page of the No Art uh, That's site. the No Art. Okay, right. that's the page of his site, mm-hmm. right? That's a that, that I associate with Boris Lurie. That's a portion of the page. He passed yeah, Boris him. Lurie, I'm sorry, uh, he was a great guy. Uh, Boris Lurie was a great guy. He died about a year ago. I was uh, was it about a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, mm. yeah, definitely Boris is important in my life. For me, he was one of the most important artists of the century. You put me in touch with him. I thank you. I liked him a lot. Yeah, nice yeah. guy, yeah. Introduced actually Konstantin uh, K. Kuzminski to him and to you both. That's of you. right. That's right. You did. I met a lot people. of people through you. And then yeah. are, you've got some more of those. Uh, that book cover was the beginning of a DVD. Um, yeah, I brought a, a small portion of the uh, pictures that were were part of that. And like I say, I mean, part of the, some of the people, like if you look at the book that who I uh, photographed here, like I'll just give you a little cross section. And there's a written part in the back, and there's. Um, you know, like uh, here's some of the, the different crews that have been in front of the door. And well, okay. Like, well, here they've got it coming now. Let's um, okay. This is the DVD show. You know, and this I've, is going to go and show. I photographed some of those people for over 25 years, like Treby there and his uh, and his girlfriend. I mean, I photographed some people one since grade one. That's Lionel Zipper and a very another interesting uh, Lower East Side person. Along, that's a Jay um, uh, graffiti kid. Now he's into motorcycles and things. 
And so I photographed a lot of these uh, people from when they were children to now they're adults. Mm -hmm. That's Joey. Uh, this is like a... That's his brother, Jesus. He's now deceased. Uh, Joey had been in jail. And you have thousands of these photographs. Yeah, thousands. That's a little juice on the left-hand side there. That's Treby's brother. That's another picture of Jesus. Yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've photographed. And you know, the other interesting thing... That's the door? Thing, that's, that's the door? That's the door. That's, that's the famous door that Mr. That's uh, the famous door uh, that, Mr. Bloomberg, that Bloomberg, Bloomberg wants to charge me $300 to? for. Yep. Well, and you have on the basis remember, of what? I mean, what, what is that about? Uh, it's about control. It's about control of the environment. It's about turning us into a suburb. It's about everybody having a white picket fence. It's about everybody being the same. And I don't want to be the same. And the other interesting thing is, is that this goes from 14th Street to the Brooklyn Bridge. I've covered the whole Lower East Side, and I brought them to well, me from in front 14? of the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I photographed you know, people yeah. from every corner of the Lower East Side. Now, in the past, in the 80s, where a lot of these started, if you went around the neighborhood, uh, you couldn't take a camera on Lower East Side and go around and photograph all those different places because, you know, you just couldn't do it. It's too dangerous. Really? It wasn't, yeah, but bringing them to the door and making the people famous, I was mm. able to photograph across the whole Lower East Side. I think everybody in the Lower East Side, everybody, more than any other single human being, I think everybody in the Lower East Side knows uh, Clayton Patterson. I think you know everybody. Is there anybody you don't know? Maybe one little shopkeeper uh, somewhere I mean, around the corner? No, but I mean, you yeah. know, these were no, just sold drugs on the, on, on, on the block. I mean, you know, it was, it's, it's like the whole cross. You must be trusted by people to have such confidence that they exert. I mean, to show you you that's a that you're too. trusted because you're talking to a whole lot of different people at a real level and that's very valuable that you oh, yeah, have absolutely. that kind of this is a very unique collection yes, this collection right. is is historically significant and relevant and probably one of the and only you've collections helped innumerable people and right. you've had shows down there yeah, that are yeah. just fantastic artists and so forth. You are a treasure. I don't know. You should be made well, a national, uh, what do you call it, national treasure. What well, do they do with a building? The picture, make... the picture should be for sure because mm. the, this, is a, this is like an inner city cross section of a whole. You know, if you go to East L.A., you have somebody who's taken a picture of one block. Yes, right. Uh, this mm. is from 14th Street to the Brooklyn Bridge for, and for, kids from when they grew up wait, wait, to when 14th they were children. Street, 14th Street over to NYU and stuff? No, 14, no. Lower East Side. Lower East so all the Broadway. Down, so you go down the Brooklyn so. Bridge and you run into projects like Smith Projects. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. So I've photographed people in Smith Projects. Mm. Treby there is on, you know, it's on Jackson Street. Mm -hmm. uh, this kid's from Allen Street. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the whole cross section of the Stanton, neighborhood. Stanton. Uh, uh, Stanton and Allen, yes. Living and, Theater's and, and down the there. And the Allen now. Boys. Just, uh, living Theater's uh, down living there. Living Theater's back. Judith is down there. God she's bless back. her. Yeah, they got a play going and now, Red on, Rogue or something. Uh, yeah. She's on Clinton Street. Yeah, that's, that's Clinton. That's Red. His yeah. father had a bodega. Red doesn't seem to uh, be around. Those were kids coming out of high school. That's mm. uh, those. Are, that's a whole little crew. Those are like the Ridge Boys. Mm. Uh, that's Hector. He was uh, sold hits on uh, Essex Street. Everybody loves you. Is there anybody that doesn't like you well, of yeah, those I'm people? Sure like no, that's, I mean, does anybody that's, that's, that's that's you are? That's Five One and Hellraiser, right there. That's, yeah, okay. Uh, and you get along with all these people. Of course. You get along. They're, well, don't say of course. It's They're hard to people. get along with such a They're varied group of people. It's like Damon Runyon. Getting along with all the people on West and Forty on Times yeah. Square. There's a kid called Shadow. Mm. I mean, it's like the, it's uh, there's the um, Attorney Street. And you can speak to him in the vernacular in the real sense, of real course. terms. Yeah. I'm giving them You're something. You're a treasure. I'm he is a treasure, famous. ladies and gentlemen. And he's a New York City treasure, and he oh. uh, he ought to be we celebrated. Do the best we can with what we have. I uh, know. Mm. And it's part of my duty. It's part mm. of my giving back. It's mm. part of uh, you know who I am. This mm. is giving to them and Keep making them right. Tell us who these people are. Oh, those people were a couple of the alcoholics that lived yeah. in the street and were. were, were like uh -huh, the drinkers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. See, they're the throwing up the L. Mm -hmm. Have you ever written up your stories? Like, uh, do you, are you familiar with Damon Runyon? No. He was great. You got to look him up. Okay. He was the voice of New York City Street. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Uh, and and, and guys and dolls and everything were based oh, on him. The 50s. And yeah, oh yeah, it goes 40s. back. Oh, he was born in the 1900s and everything. Well, but he was see, wonderful way down by uh, Madison Street. But he was down Times Square. He said, They're from Essex Street. I was standing on 43rd and Broadway, and who should come along but Harry the Horse? And then he would go into a story and talk. There talking you go. About, I could do that. Yeah, you could do it They're in the spades. Twins. Have you ever thought about yeah. doing like a little play or something or coming off your experience? And you've got contact with these people. What a great That's fridge. That's and fridge every was, picture it's, it's is older. a story. Every picture is a story. And you're course, in confident yeah. uh, communication with them all because they trust you. Yeah, well, I was. Do you understand how important that is? Yeah, yeah. I never disrespected that. I never, I never assumed that. I never, ever, you know, took it for right. granted. It's a they very know you're important safe. thing. Uh, you're confident. I'm absolutely. Con 
you're, you're, a comrade. you're confidential. Yeah, of course. And you're not, yeah, right. Course, you see, that's really good. Good for you. I mean, that's the trust What a factor. beautiful door. Why would they want to change that door? That's an because icon. Bloomberg, it that's is like an icon. changing the Statue of Liberty or it something. It is, that's right. Yeah. I don't know what it is, absolutely. I mean, why I don't we start like a movement or a petition or something? I hope so. I have a $300 yeah. fine. Oh, there's Richard Hamilton, the artist. $300 is a lot and, of money. Uh, yeah, $300 is a lot of money, yeah. and it doesn't end then. I'd rather go to Rikers Island yeah. and give him that money. Really? Oh, it's an yeah. issue. You were that way when you did the Thompson Square thing, yeah, too. Absolutely. It was an issue. It was, an, it was a matter of principle, right? Of course. When you stood up against that police uh, Definitely. riot. Definitely. I went to uh, Bronx House of Detention. There were two people in central monitoring at that time, myself and Larry Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Davis uh, was under central monitoring. I was under central monitoring. Uh, Larry Davis shot Kip six cops with a gun. I shot six cops with a video, video camera and got him uh, criminally indicted. Yeah, and you go and shoot a lot of the policemen doing in their work uh, beating up on people and I stuff. Did and sometimes that time. They, I, was quite well I think there's a lot of people with that. We're talking, we're talking about the people. Here's some you got the, the confidence, total yeah. confidence of all the people and so forth. Here's some of the crews. But uh, what about the authorities? Like, say, the police officers and the police uh, commissioners and the police who you come and do a videotape of them beating up. Remember they Rodney would call me King a, out a, in Los Angeles? A docu contrarian, I'm sure. A docu contrarian. No. <laughs> what is the attitude of the system, police and otherwise, toward you with your camera intruding upon? on them beating well, up on I somebody mean, or, or killing an Amadou Diallo or something like that. Well, I mean, that. I, you know, that's, I mean, that's, you that's, know that's what a, I'm saying. Well, that's a big topic and I don't want to really digress You don't want to go there. Area, okay. But, uh, okay. And also that whole system is changing dramatically. I mean, uh, the, yeah, of course. I mean, at one time you used to be able to, uh, in, in a sense, fight with the police and be equal because you had the court system that allowed you to go there and deal with those problems. It's all corrupt now. I'm not saying corrupt, but I'm You're saying okay. after 9-11, they have this whole thing about national security where the whole thing has become skewed and almost anything can be considered antisocial. Anything, anti, anything attached to antisocial is considered terrorist. Right. And what they consider antisocial is like a Bloomberg with my door. So it, all used this guy. To, it used to be that the enemy du jour for a long time while I was growing up were the commies. Remember COINTELPRO yeah. and all that stuff? Yeah, of course. The commies were the enemy because they were the threat to the American way. Right. Now it's uh, the terrorists. And it tends to be associated largely with the Muslims, doesn't it now? Nowadays, so well, they've got a whole new digress against, patina on geopolitics of the world but let's and locally. Stick, let's stick to Bloomberg and what he's doing to the city. So mm -hmm. he's trying to enforce his will on who I am. And what he's trying to do is, is take away my artistic freedom and my freedom of speech. And what he's trying to do is get me to paint my door totally black. And mm -hmm. his way of forcing me and trying to force me into that is by giving me a $300 fine. And then once you pay the fine, you Was have he willing to give you the bucket of paint? Oh, no, no, absolutely. No, you'd have to buy the paints yourself no, no, to paint no, no. the door they, no, no. over he, black? No, 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 you, Would no, you have no. to buy a bucket of black paint no, to paint I don't. your it's door worse. to be in it's a court? Worse. Oh, it's worse. worse. Okay. It's worse. He's worse. going to come down and paint it for me. He's going to paint it for you. I don't want you. him touching my property. Mm -hmm. I don't want him coming near me with his paint, with his You mean his he's going to come aesthetics. personally? Has he, has he said that well, in a conversation not. with... No, oh, he hasn't said that. but part of the suit is, or part of the fine is, part of the fine... He would never do that. How are you going to make a compromise with an attitude I'm not. How are you going to make a compromise? I'm not. I'm not. So what are you going to do? You're I'll go to Rikers if I have to. You've had your head beaten in a few times, haven't you? I have, but it gave me a golden smile. I had some mm. teeth knocked out. and I got, you got you teeth know. knocked out? You've yeah. had violence done to you of for course. videotaping and, and, yeah, and documenting doing, doing, police brutality, right? Yes. Okay. But uh, my point is, is what he's trying to do and what, what he, the, the, one of his arguments is or one of his means of force is to fine and they will come and paint your door for you. I don't want him painting my door. That's a greater violation what than the fine. What are you going fine. to do if all of a sudden there appears a guy in a white uh, I'll open you know, the door. overalls I'll open the door. with I'm not a paint after the bucket worker. and they just say, uh, we've got warrant, right. and they start painting. Well, what well, would you do? What would you do? What could you my do? My conflict is not with the workers. No, of course not. My con I would just open the door. In order to paint the door, he'd have to enter the property. You can do it oh, in a non-violent way. Oh, the door's not open way. to the street? Of course it is. But, how, but, how, but if I open the door, which opens inward, which it has to, because the fire department regulations are, if they come into the building, they have to be able to kick it in. It then you got means, that down, right? Yeah. It then means that I'll, if I open the door, then they have to come into my property. Are they going to come into my property? No, they're not. They're not going to trespass to paint my door. But suppose and I'm not they do it in the dead of the night. What if they the come up with a, with a roller and do it in the dead of the night? or? A, Maybe one of those things. What would well, you do? Well, I don't know. What happens if they all come naked and dance around and drink beer? I don't know. I mean, you, you know, let's not... the police are going to come naked? No, police aren't going to... The police aren't going to do it anyway. No. But, oh. but let's not, let, let's oh. not get too far into fantasy because it's oh. a serious issue and I okay, want to deal with the right, reality right. and the practicality right. of the situation okay. as it exists. Right. That's what's okay. important. Yeah. 
What yeah. is is what I want to deal well, with. Well, I, I commend you for doing that. You got a lawyer or something? You have I to have, have a lawyer. Why do I have to now? Now I have to get a lawyer. Yeah, lots of money for a lawyer because they went to law school and they got to pay it's high not, rent. What else is there other than money that you're talking about? What else is there? Well, I don't think there's anything else other than money. Of course there is. It occupies my mind. Yeah. Oh. You, you want to occupy your mind about thinking about the money. I want to occupy my mind about thinking about uh, making art and taking no, pictures. I want, to think, I want to occupy my mind thinking about something other than money. Everybody has to be concerned with how the hell they're going to live. I and want it, and freedom it's all dictated by a few people. I want freedom of you thought. You started this thing and you said you were living down there free. I you think you're free? free? You think I, you well, live free? I was free. You were now, free? I was, absolutely. Free to me. You think it's possible for an individual to be free in, a, in an unfree free. society? I was free. I was free, free for me, absolutely. Well, that's I could thing. dress as I you wanted. I, I could live as I wanted. Mm -hmm. I could do what I want. Absolutely. There was mm -hmm. no question I was free. Mm -hmm. But now what he's doing is, and you keep on getting back to the money, it isn't the money that I'm really specifically worried about. It's the intrusion into my thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't want to conform to, to a, a white picket fence. It's one of the reasons that I moved to a ghetto area and liked it because I was allowed to be whoever it was that I wanted to be. So now he's, he's, he's entering into my thoughts, into who I am. Now I got to deal with, okay, what am I going to do about the door? Mm. Am I going to paint it? Am I not going to be? I don't want to think about that. Yeah. So now he's, he's entering into my pocketbook because he's trying to charge me money. Now he wants to, like you say, with the logic and getting into all these fantasies, full of this, this fantasy of well, what happens if they come here or that. I don't want to think about what that. What do they paint your, paint your door green? I don't want to think door. about that. Now you see, you're asking me to get involved in a conversation that's inane. The whole thing is stupid to me. Okay, I don't want okay. to be involved right. in it. Hmm. It's not part of my... It, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. want to deal with it. Right. Okay. I don't want to have anything to do with no, it. No, I understand what you're saying. I don't saying. want to be sitting at, at home at night and thinking, well, what am I going to do if... You know, I don't want to... Do you think it would be, be good dictating. if everybody could be able to be free to do what it is that I ever we want? Within the content... We were free. We were... We used to be you free. think we were? I was free. I don't think we've ever been free. Well, that's the difference between you and me. Yeah, that's, that's the different take I have. I think I, they've always you've been... You've always, always lived under some sort of ideology or concept of ideology. I always lived by, by what it was that I wanted to do. Basically, I was an artist and I was free. Yeah. I lived my life my way. It might not have, have reached the standards of what everybody else thinks is practical or great. Or, what percentage or of the world population do you think are able to do what it is and realize their full potential? I, I don't even... I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. I'm thinking about me. I think everybody's a slave. But that's I mean, you. It's but a, that's you. But they, let, let's talk about. Okay. You know, if you want, if you, if we want to talk about. We don't you, live fine. in a free no system. Okay, I, okay. Did. I okay. did. You I did. I was free. Okay. I was that's free. All right. I was all right. absolutely free. Abby Hoffman. Free to was, think. Yeah. I don't know about Abby Hoffman. Yeah. I know about me. Yeah. Okay. You know. And, and Elsa. Uh, and Elsa. And, and the yes, dog. we lived. We we absolutely lived. I lived as I wanted to live. Mm-hmm. Hey, my people were pioneers. Do you pioneers. feel subversive? My, 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 Do you feel subversive for thinking that way? My people were pioneers. They mm. came to the West. They lived free. They, there was no rules at that time. Mm. They were like the new people on mm. the block. They yeah. lived free. They were free. New people, yeah. When we Out came to the Lower East Side, mm. it was, it was a f kind of a forgotten end of the world. It was yeah. like the ghetto. Nobody mm. cares what goes on in the ghetto. You can mm. do whatever it is you want to do. You, yeah. know, you want to have pink, you know, take a look at the front of this. I had mm. a big painting in the front, my painting in the front of the window. You yeah. can do that now. I had the graffiti on the window. What do you mean? You can't put a window? You can't put your own painting in a window in New York? Is that true? Is it getting that bad? Are well, you let, serious? Let, let's stick with my door. Okay, that, that okay, the about. door. That's uh, right. Front see, door book. Yeah. I don't want to get into speculating because then I'm going to have to start imagining what's going to happen. Uh, I see. You want to deal with the facts, man. The facts, man. Yeah. Right. And you do. Okay. I want to live my, my life as a free person. I don't mm. want to have them impinging into uh, into my thinking. And uh -huh. now I have to make the door green or blue. or It's a stupid thing to think about. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's inane. Uh -huh. It means nothing. Mm. And so now I have this mayor who must make like $3.6 million a day in order to make a billion dollars a year. Mm. And he has totally lost touch with all of the people. He has no contact with the people. People today, I know people who are running an art gallery who's down in City Hall mm -hmm. protesting with all these kids because he wants to take away their Metro cards. Mm -hmm. You know, this person, he, he, he's one of the richest people in the world and he gives us back nothing. He mm. only takes. All he thinks about is money. Mm. You know, there used to be a game on the Lower East Side. It's not really a game, but it was a way of dealing with life. And for the people that didn't have a lot of money or couldn't park in a it's parking most lot, people. across. Across the street mm. it was, a, was a school, and that meant on Friday after 4 o'clock, once you knew that if you packed, uh, parked past the parking meter, you could park there for free because there were no parking meters because it belonged to the school. Uh -huh. So now you could park there from Friday until Monday at 7 o'clock when the school came back into uh, effect, and you, know, you had to move your car. Mm -hmm. Now what he did is he put those munis in the block, and he took away all the parking meters, so that means now the whole block has a meter with that box on the on the end. What's a muni box? Well, it's, but you have to go in and put money in and they give you a ticket. So now the whole block is metered. So that's taken away that possibility for a person to have a free place to park. Mm, that's a new profit center. 
Yeah, yeah. everything's yeah. profit. Everything's yeah. money. That's mm -hmm. all he thinks about is money. He doesn't yeah. think about people. I mean, he was happy that uh, that Tishman bought uh, Stuyvesant Town and Cooper City Village. Yeah. That, that was a mm. huge international corporation. Yeah, yeah right. Pay for it. Mm. They were trying to take over St. Vincent's Hospital and build some big new structure. And now it turns out St. Vincent's doesn't have the money to run their own hospital. Mm. So, I mean, you know, they, on, on, the, on Ludlow Street, <coughs> he allowed this out-of-control uh, uh, development to go in there with these international corporations building these luxury hotels and whatever, and they didn't have the money to do it. You had Ratner in Brooklyn uh, taking with eminent domain, which he was supporting, knocking out the, the common people out of all of those neighborhoods in order for this Ratner guy to come in and take over. And now it turns out he doesn't have the money. Well, they so built he's allowed these out of control developers that don't really substantially, they can't support what it is that their dream is. But meanwhile, it's okay to knock out all the people. And that's Bloomberg. He does not relate well, the, to the people the, of the New people, York. Well, the people don't have any money. So if but the people don't the money. have any money, that's not a good market. Let me market. ask you a question. But you have to build ask... something that the people who have money can pay a lot of money for because that's a good market. Let's it's deal the... with what is. Mm, okay. okay, what is... The people have no money. What is... What is... Mm. I'm assuming that you're right, the people have no money. Yeah, that's the way it's always been. No, it hasn't. But let's, well, let, more let, or less. But let's yeah. take now. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so I call these people whales. You get like the Madoffs out there, and these whales keep on absorbing, absorbing, absorbing all the money. Mm. Bloomberg went from $7.5 billion when he started off as mayor that's to $15 real billion. Money. Dollars. Yeah. But you say people don't have money. Well, all of a sudden, he's doubled in billions. No, I say the people, the masses, don't let's, have money. Get to my point. Let's deal with the point I'm mm. trying to make. Okay. The point is, is that like Plankton, those dollar bills, mm. he's absorbed them all. He has the money. The money that he people have lost, mm. he has. Yeah. And at one time, money wasn't that big a factor. I could have lived on, you know, like Lou Reed paying thirty-eight dollars a month. It was the cool after was the not, Second World War for three or four or five decades. It was cool until the till the mid eighties. Uh huh. It was. It was. Cool Something happened. Yeah. Things have happened and changed out of, of history. It was now, good because we had won a war. We, we won everything. We had everything, and there was all that. We had a great Bloomberg time. Bloomberg has absorbed all the money. There was room for the, money. the people to do something. All they those people that you're talking play. about who used to be able to live, who, who were losing their homes who can't afford to go now, out to the restaurants. Yeah. Bloomberg has the money. Well, all right. Yeah, but they've also got a thing where they're coming up a situation that in terms of the larger issues, like Mr. Obama is trying to do things and he's in very short uh, shrift now because he's done a lot of things. He's given all this money to AIG and to the bankers. Yeah, they've done the well. Bloomberg types. They've gotten the Bloomberg really rich. Types. Give them more, 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 right. more, more. Mr. Right. Bush did a back tax cut. Right. When he did, it was his singular thing. But let's get back to New York. But Bloomberg, he did. Bloomberg has doubled well, in billions. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So he's got well, he's, all that money that he He's collected is real, and that real money belonged to real people. Those real people no longer have the money. He has the money. People now can't get metro cars. People are losing their homes. They can't pay the rent, and he's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, they're getting bigger, and and when and he's Bush only gave supporting his, the the bigger when and bigger Bush and bigger. Gave, when Bush did his tax cut, his singular thing when he first came in, it didn't even go to the upper one percent. It didn't even go to the upper one tenth of one percent. It went to one. The upper one hundredth of one percent is where the money, the tax breaks went. Well, and when he did Bloomberg's that, okay. One of those people. So, our so mayor, what you're our doing, guy, our so, pet, yeah, so our what savior. You're, yeah, you're doing right. that, and then you have another thing, Mister. Uh, I don't want to go theoretical. You hate theoretical or anything, but I mean, Mister. Uh, Mister. Keynes said that in 1930 he wrote a letter to his grandchildren he was talking about economics we got an economics so we're going to do a stimulus pack how the hell are we going to get people you're going to be confronted at that time that's about now with not only just normal but techno massive technologically uh, induced unemployment that is that all the wage slaves that had to be on Henry Ford's line and the other things where they could bargain in the la labor labor unions are down to about six percent in the private sector now and heading south uh, even in the public sector there's uh, you know it, they, so that the labor input and that's the only way most people have to get income to buy bread but you see, is to have a job right, and no the question. jobs are not going to be there they're talking about a jobless and the, and recovery jobs now are, and it's structural and, the, and they're coming against and, and the structure and it's technological and the and Assets People that in the projects do not have computers. No, no. And not only do they not have computers, but if they do have a community, a, a computer, they're not set up for high-speed internet ac no, access. No, it's it's more than that. It invades the, the whole world is, society. It's a whole world society and thing. And the other thing too the is, labor, the labor theory of value and distributing income to the masses. The 
the right. serfs on the feudal estate where all the assets are owned by right. a few people, set the template for all the peer review institutions and everything. All the institutions are in debt to them. They set the, the template. For me and then the, 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 piece, the people right. always have to have a job but in order to pay the rent with, and buy food and so forth. Here's the problem with the theory. The problem with the theory is this, is that I have to live my life my way. I didn't go to Harvard and I'm not an economist. I don't deal with the whole world. I deal with my world. Yeah. And in order for me to get into the, the language that you're talking about and the structure and thinking about the whole society, okay. first of all, it's like a religion. Mm. And in order to get involved in that religion, you have to get involved in that thought. I want to deal with my own creativity. Okay. I don't want to learn. Or your own community. I, All right. I, I, I don't want to learn mm. what Kinsey and said about the economy because then no, I have. No, Keynes. John Keynes, Maynard Keynes. Or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Or whoever. No, John Maynard Carl Marx, was a giant. Or whoever. Well, Karl Marx would have had but a whoever. different take. It's, yeah. it's, it's a structure of thinking. It's a logic. What I'm saying is what's going on in the It's a learning lower... process. Let me finish. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a learning process. And I, as an individual who doesn't deal with the whole world. I want to deal with my world. Mm. So I don't want to really enter into the, all that logic because, first of all, I won't have an influence on it. It's like me dealing with, Lord, with George Bush, Lord George Bush or yeah. Lord Bloomberg. I can't have an influence on that. Bloomberg, maybe. George Bush, Bloomberg over no. that door. Exactly. Right. Bloomberg over, over an the door. issue, yeah. The black, the, no, the what black do you call door. it? Front door. Yeah. You just call it the front door? You don't the call it door. the graffiti so, door or anything? No. Does it have a so, name or yeah, a brand or anything? The no. door to the Clayton's. The Clayton door. Clayton door. Clayton. But uh, in order for me to learn all that logic, and I have to then, you know, take classes. I, I want to deal with with who I'm. Reality. I want to deal you with my world. Yeah, I want, right. I want to. I want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm dealing with these people. This is a richness. This is a jewel. This is a Absolutely. duty. Absolutely. You so are for a jewel. me to, to get off and worry about thinking and learning about Karl Marx and all the rest. I of just it, mentioned I, it. I know, but because it's, this is it, all taken but it's, in but terms of larger context. Right, but yeah. it's not the context that I deal with. Mm, okay. The context mm. I deal with is mm. the people who I'm around, the people right. who I can give back to, the people mm. I can make a contribution to. Right. And this front door book is a contribution to the people of the Lower East Side. Thank you very and much. It's a it's memory, a, and, mm -hmm. it, and it's and it's and it's uh, it, it's it's saving souls. Mm -hmm. It's giving these people mm -hmm. the same position in a way that Theo gave Vincent Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. Only these are mm -hmm. not Vincent Van Goghs because they didn't come from privilege. Mm -hmm. These are people that come from like the working class and, and the bottom, and the lower ends of society. But you 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 don't you come from a privileged section, don't you? No, you don't I, come from working class. Of background? course, I come from working class. You do. You come from Absolutely. working class my mother in was Canada. A nurse, my mother was a nurse's aide, and my father did whatever. Whatever. And not only that, my father was very eccentric, so he was out of tune with totally with the whole neighborhood. So mm. not only was uh, was it working class, but it was out of sync with the whole neighborhood. So idiosyncratic or idio. Well, he was an individual that lived. Individualist. Uh, one of those totally pesky ex individualists. Extreme that, individualist. Yes. Well. Okay. Right. And uh, so, uh, mm -hmm. no, I absolutely didn't come from the working class. Mm -hmm. You know. No, you, you, you I did, mean, didn't. I mean, I, I didn't come from anywhere above uh, the working class. You didn't have a silver spoon in your mouth when you were born. I didn't have a spoon in my mouth. But didn't uh, even have a spoon. Didn't even have a spoon. Didn't even a wooden spoon. No. But that's okay. fine. But that's mm -hmm. fine yeah. because yeah. I have strength of character. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes, you do. You are really a strong character. I have strength of purpose. Mm -hmm. and I have ambition, mm -hmm. and I have goals. Ambition to... What is your ambition? What's the goal? Uh, the What's goal the is, goal? It, the overall goal is to, uh, at, at this point, is to uh, save what it is that I have, I've created, which yes. is a lot. It sure is. You are a national treasure. Uh, you don't get that, any support from any of the foundations or anything? No. There's but, I mean, nobody you know, it's, trying... It's working there's class. no movement too, to make uh, 161 Essex Street a national shrine or anything like that? You know, actually, I'm, where I was really blessed. And maybe there is. I'll huh? show you. It is coming. Well, the, right? the blessing that I've had was yeah. these kids uh, made, okay. a, made a movie called. Oh Catholic. yes, by all means, we're going to yeah, bring ben it up Sullivan, again. The great uh, uh, guy, Ben Solomon, Dan Levin. Who, uh, who, who, the camera here. I'll just hold until you can come in tight on it. This is a first-class movie that was made by those fellows. I did a program kids. with them. You did. I did. And, and that I was came one down. of the biggest blessings in my life. Was mm -hmm. those people helped explain me to the world. You want to come in on the robotic camera when and you get they, a chance. Uh, there you go. That's captured the mm. uh, the movie, and that talks yeah. about the uh, my history on the Lower East Side. And this was analysis. a serious put together thing. Tell us about it. We got about three minutes, four minutes left. So okay. Tell well, there were actually. Uh, no, give it a little more on the book on the DVD, please. Yeah, there were, there if were you actually can. a couple of kids that grew up in the, in New York City, uh, Ben Solomon and Dan Levin. Well, okay. And uh, what happened was is that they, ever since they were children, they knew of my my 
door and they knew about my photographs and like that and they went off and went to film school mm -hmm. and uh, came back when their ambition was to take uh, you know my struggle and put it into a movie and they did it's really good it's great yeah. and then this other person Jenner first came in mm -hmm. and edited it and there yeah. were three really brilliant they were uh, young and they were yeah. really good they really Absol knew what they were doing really yeah. knew what they were doing and their dad was in the business uh, helped well, also. And to, he uh, knew well, a lot. Dan uh, Levin his yeah. father uh, uh, Mark Levin right. is, uh, is a very famous and well known uh, uh, documentary <laughs> Right. And, and their grandfather was a documentarian. So right. he's like third generation. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah. That's a total blessing to me. Yeah, 100%. yeah. It's and it blessing. tells your story more or less. It and tells it a portion of my story. And it presents the archiving you've done. And it and does in a very that. unique and creative and, and amazing way. Yeah, those boys are like a bless. They were the biggest, one of the biggest blessings I've had in my they're life. Just, they're in the 20s. They were yeah. young. Yeah, Jenner now is 25. 20, oh, he's getting up, right? Yeah, getting, he's old, getting up. Getting up. But what it did was it turned this whole, it, it turned the youth into, to become interested in who I do am Do you and have what generic, I, I know you're talking Lower East Side, no, do you generic, as a generic or as a thing like that, the youth, let's say the teenagers, the 20 year olds, do you have faith or thought about the, oh, absolutely, the 20 year olds. Uh, the 20 year olds, they seem to be pretty cool, don't they? You know, we've And had this, they're looking for something. It's like I missed two generations, the X generation and the slacker generation. There's mm. a generation out there like 35 and under, certainly in their 20s that are absolutely alive and brilliant and right. happening and, and very concerned and very concerned and very and alive interested in, in, in the concept of freedom active and and creativity and creativity and, and this is this is proof of it this you is know. one of them they came and found you and did this yeah absolutely there should be more young people going out find national once treasures you get like past 35 we got bounced from every festival tribeca uh, sundance toronto all of them mm -hmm. they had a, a, a screening at this place called rooftops which is like kind of more undergroundish yeah and there was two thousand kids in their 20s came and watched that word gets around yeah but Under, in the underground. But, so when you get into the De Niro's, he's mm. over in, in Dubai and these other places, you know, dealing with the billionaires. Yeah, right. These are the, these are the youth. This is the gen next generation. These are the kids in their 20s. And they'll know something good when they see it. And they'll go, they well, will, I and mean, word can get out. It's a blessing for me to be able to deal with kids. It's like, you Bobby know, Dylan kids, sang but, back you know. in 1968, 69, 70, you know, he sang the times they are a changing and, and so are. forth. And they were. And, and, and there was are. something blowing in the wind then. Is it still blowing in the wind? Is there a big change? I, I know you don't like to think big, but is there no, a big change? I like big to think big, but I like to think locally. That locally. Think locally, think uh, globally. How about act Lo locally. locally, and it'll be effective, especially in a place like New I don't York. like local. I don't like local. I know, because but I the like point to, is yeah. you can have an influence on the whole world. In a place like New York, if you can be effective in your neighborhood, it changes the whole world. If you can make it there, you make well, it anywhere. It's up to you, New York. But I'll tell you something. New York. I'd better watch out, my Mr. Use of the Frank video camera. Sinatra. That's I'm going to knock you off your pedestal there you with go. that, right? That I, don't right? Have, I don't have Let's a pedestal. Let's take a vote in the audience. Right, Who's right. better, Frank Sinatra? or my version of New York, New York? You. Thank you. Uh, You're still alive. Yeah, that's true. But the that's point true. is, Good is that point. my videotape in 1988, which, which changed really how people uh, document uh, uh, protests, yeah, yeah. That went worldwide. Yeah, 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 I did. Little Brother's Watching Big Brother. I was mm. on Oprah. That went worldwide. I yeah, was on yeah. CNN. That went worldwide. That's right. Well, so, you know, from a little guy on the Lower East Side catching, getting six cops criminally indicted. A yeah, captain, God bless you for a that. Captain, yeah. uh, you know, I got more cops in trouble with the use of the video camera. Oh, than anybody thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The idea is to mm. keep going and, to, and mm. to stay on point and mm. to have your goals. And you ought to get and a, that went, went worldwide. Shouldn't so we get was some local. support out about this idea of your door? I think we ought to protect your door. Should we have a, we have a bunch of people that would go around it at night and just have, you no. know, what baseball we should do is bats? Think about, what I want them to do is think about Big the guys, archives. You know? I, want to, I want to save the archives. I want to produce mm. books. You know, mm. Bloomberg, I don't care what he does with the door. Mayor Man, you stay away well. from that door. Mayor Man, stay away from that door. Bring the people to the door do and introduce them to the ar to mm. the archives. I need mm. to save the archives. The yeah. door, Bloomberg, you know, like I said, I would go to Rikers before I'd pay him that door, yeah. uh, paint the mm. door. Mm. But the point is, is that it's the um, it's the saving of the archives that's critical. Yeah, it's the videotape. Your archive is incredible. See, if I have rich. to get into the door, it's garbage thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into his logic. His mm -hmm. logic is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, but the archives well, is important. Okay, we I love you, Harold. We really I love do. you, and the New York loves you, and the world loves you, and well, that's a great picture too. They got. On the there, cover uh, of this DVD, that's really good. No, the Your boys pleasure. Are a blessing. Your pleasure, Everett. One of the treasures, one of the great treasures of New York City, that being Clayton Patterson, and let's not forget his lovely companion Elsa, Absolutely. who's wonderful, and the dog. Dogs, and the dogs. Doing, dogs are doing well. Dickie and Spider. Yeah, yes. and dogs the confidence of all the people down there, which bespeaks a very. Uh,